next time you cast your strike for any damage, immediately masturbate until orgasm. Why? Caster's testes clitoris grow by 1d3 times in proportion. Ow. Uh, permanently, I presume. It doesn't say. Some results say permanently. But it doesn't not say permanently, so kind of up in the air. Caster becomes the opposite disposition and gender. Again, permanently. And so, not only... Do you, if you're a male, do you become female? But if you were really optimistic, then you become depressed. You become a depressed female. Um. Yeah, all right. Caster attempts to pinch the buttocks of the next animal in sight. So if you just happen to be next to a horse, you'd be like, "Hey, whoop, whoop, whoop. and then that was it. Your your magical misfire uh, thing is taken care of. You. You would be lucky to get off with that. Uh, target loses one third of height and weight. Main master decides the appropriate penalties. Again, you're the game creator. Why don't you decide the appropriate penalties? You know what the races are. You made them. You know what the genders are and how those affect the races. Don't you think you can decide what one third of height and weight penalties are? It's your game. Why are you making the main master do this kind of work? You already have 850 pages. Is it really that much work to do more? If so, why did you put it in here? Target attempts to butt slam the next being in sight. I'm not even sure. Is that just just like bumping into somebody from behind? Is that what a butt? Or is that actually turning around and hitting them with your butt is that butt slamming and what once and then that's over that's not so bad seems kind of pointless scratch and sniff magical symbol of a smelly vagina appears on the forehead of each party member scratch and sniff magic uh, now I may be I may be misremembering or misunderstanding, but loosely, Fatal is based on a pseudo-medieval historical landscape and setting. Scratch and sniff stickers, especially of vaginas, what, what connection is there at all in any way and how is a sticker on somebody's forehead? And why would you use them? And so many questions, none of which need answers. Uh, eyeball appears on the caster's cock head. Not his penis or his glands. His cock head. It can determine truth falsity of one statement once per day. The rest of the time, it's just a giant eyeball on your penis. Casters and targets cock and balls are flipped upside down. Or a female, their vagina and ass switch places. Because those two are like analogs of each other, I guess. Nutsack of caster swells to one uh, ten d thousand in volume for three d three days. It swells to ten ten d thousand what? Ten d thousand times? Ten d thousand inches? Pounds? C centimeters? Thanks for the help. Uh, next time caster defecates the turd comes out alive attacks caster and here's its stats <sighs> living turd comes out of your uh, attacks with what it's a turd how does it have any sort of <sighs> target turns into a fat dark female oh, no, here's good. 
The main master decides appropriate penalties. Why is it a penalty to be a fat, dark female? First of all, and if you mean for there to be a penalty, why don't you have them? Caster's defecation is forever white in color. Because that's important, because... Oh, that's right, it's not. Except in Fatal, where the only reason this could possibly be important is if the color of your defecation is ever once the subject of a discussion in game. In Fatal, it probably is. Maybe more than once. And it could actually be a plot point. That's the sad thing. That's the scary thing. Now, Caster has an inex inexplicable love for ogres. Main Master decides how the ogres are loved. That joke is kind of funny in itself. How the ogres are loved. Maybe they're like Hummel figurines and you just collect ogres? Like lighthouse pictures? I don't know. Or it could be a real love for ogres. But yeah, love for ogres. That's dangerous in any manner. Uh, Caster becomes more ethical and more immoral. I, I read a long time ago, I read the descriptions of moral and immoral and ethical and stuff in this game. I don't quite grasp how you can be more ethical, but less moral. I know one's basically supposedly more religious and the other's more, like, s uh, secular based but more ethical and more immoral huh okay moving along we find the spell for an erection is accidentally cast centered on either the caster or the nearest male either one just don't matter uh Targets penis slash breasts enlarged to 40 12 inches in length can be used for 1d2 P damage points for every foot in length. Mm, that sounds painful. I don't think I would want to do that. Cast your sperm becomes acidic when it meets air. And I'm not going to read the rest of that. Caster's ass spontaneously combusts. 2d6 life points damage. If your ass combusts, I think you would be taking more than 12 damage. Does he know what the ass is? Does he realize this is kind of an important component of the human body? Does he know what spontaneous combustion is? It's things blowing up? You kind of need your ass? It holds a lot of important things? Yeah, well, I'm not his teacher. Um, every time the target lies, their penis nipples grow an inch. Penis slash nipples, not penis nipples, though. I'm sure that's in here somewhere. Uh, so you would pretty much lie all the time if you were a guy, I guess. And uh, I don't know if females want longer nipples. I probably not. Uh, casters cock and balls slash clitoris. Falls off for a D for one round, and reattach themselves. Oh, by the way, health check at threshold eighty or die. Even though they reattach themselves, by the way, you could also die from this wacky hijinks. Caster transmogrifies into a cock of one d eight plus three inches for two rounds. Pass health check at uh, threshold eighty or die, please. Do you think he's talking about a rooster? Probably not. He doesn't specify that, but I have a feeling he's not. And here's a bunch of stuff that I did not care about. This is like apparently all the different gods in his game. So we will instead continue with 
If you roll 798 on 2d1000, Caster's body emits an odor that smells like sweaty nuts. Unless he's talking about, like, almonds or something that have been in a humid condition. I think we know what this is referring to. I would prefer it if it wasn't, but he, he includes this. Um, Caster hallucinates that a giant UI, uh, I think that's something immoral, rabid wallaby named Joe Sun is attempting to rape them. That's, a, again, an extremely specific hallucination. And it's got a name and everything. And its own disposition. That's... That's too much. Why... This could be an okay chart. I, I just... I don't get it. Cash begins to hallucinate the target of the spell is attempting to rape an ox. Okay. Which, if you cast Fireball or something and kill the person... That would make the caster freak out, I would think. Uh, caster begins to hallucinate. They see a succubus sucking on a bear's nipple. They hallucinate that they see a succubus sucking on a bear's nipple. So they've introduced two new imaginary creatures for this hallucination doing something that doesn't make sense and may or may not have a context in the actual spell for no reason that I can possibly think of. And down here we've got a caster and target forever believe they're lovers. Caster and target forever believe they're homosexual lovers. So, okay, so what if the caster and target are both the same sex and you roll this do they believe they're lovers but one of them thinks they're not the sex they are caster and target forever believe they're both homosexual but I guess they don't believe they're lovers caster and target forever believe they're homosexual and must get it on now doesn't that just mean they want to have sex with each other? Why? What is this? Believe they are a homosexual and must get it on now. It doesn't... <sighs> Caster and Target forever believe they must run off together and make babies. How is that different than... <sighs> Caster and Target forever believe that they are undead whores. And do Caster and Target know what undead whores are supposed to do? Do undead whores give a discount for their whoring? If you're undead, do you feel pleasure? How do you have an undead whore? But that doesn't even... Cast your... Whoops. These here, where I was going, I didn't realize again that I uh, forever believe they run off together and make babies. Cast me hurry to believe they are undead whores. Now, Cast from Target believe they are being pursued by a giant, rabid chipmunk with huge nipples. Why do the huge nipples matter? I can understand being pursued by the rabid chipmunk. Do they stop and talk to each other and go, Man, I can't believe we're being pursued by that chipmunk. Oh my God, did you see how big it is? And the other one says, Yeah, but my God, did you see the nipples on that thing? They're, they're huge too. Man, the huge nipples. What? Why the nipples? Caster and Target forever believe that rape is wrong. Well, that's definitely an, an aberration. 
brought about only by magic in the land of fatal because that definitely cannot be that cannot be tolerated cast your target forever believe that rape is fun and should be exercised daily now this again is just another day for most characters in fatal cast your target forever believe that turds are an excellent source of nutrition so true so true every time a spell is cast the caster punches themselves in the cock and balls slash gash for two life points of damage <sighs> wow and then here's a bunch of stuff you might say flicks nut sack my cock is very small and limp incest is best and and just a bunch of random things that your character would shout for some reason and then here is uh, now, I, apparently this is all part of the same chart I guess whenever you cast a spell this magical misfire makes the caster requires an additional ingredient for the spell handful of sweat from any cock and balls so if you're a wizard the male wizard then I guess you'll be fine you just reach down and grab you a handful of sweat uh, more difficult if you're a female wizard I guess caster has six percent chance 16 random gems are shit per day if meat is consumed, lose four life points. Kind of seems worth it. Four life points is only twice what you get for punching yourself in the cock and balls, so even though it's only 6%, 16 gems, that's pretty good. Um, okay. Here's just a bunch. Uh, caster attempts to sniff the target's asshole so I guess this one was like a temporary thing he doesn't always do this like that one result only to this target a target gets a six inch erection for the battle and sprint speed is halved while his current armor drops by 20 for no discernible reason uh, caster and target's legs are twisted until broken a main master decides penalties and damage. Don't you know what broken legs do? This is your game. You really you didn't have broken legs in this giant math fest of statistics. You have never had broken legs in all of your supposed playing and sessions that you run and all these god awful charts you've come up with you haven't had a character with two broken legs and you didn't apply penalties I find that hard to believe I wouldn't find it hard to believe if no one ever played this game if that's the case then yes I would believe that uh, let's just go on shall we caster attempts to flick the genitalia of every party member hey come here for a minute Flick. Caster writes a hundred times on the next tree they see, My name is George, I eat shit for breakfast. Caster picks up a strange habit, fondling their balls, breasts in public, deliberately in front of barmaids. Okay, if you were a female, why would you fondle your breast in public in front of barmaids? It doesn't say anything about being homosexual, so would it be to make them jealous? What if you don't have very impressive breasts or cups from your totally random dice roll for your cup size. Caster picks up a strange habit, mooning everyone that has charisma 120 or better. Again, just another day in faith. Uh, screaming at random males and females, I can smell your balls and or God. Oh, 
God. Why would you... How does that... Humping church stairs... Uh, using fingers to quote everything said. I kind of like that. That's funny. Uh, uh, that may be... Nope, there's one. Uh, target cre creature's nipples are rearranged randomly on each breast. I really had to, uh, really had to dig for that one, too. To, because, I mean, there's a lot more with orgasms and stuff, but they're, they're all kind of getting cut and paste and uh, hiccups during sexual excitement and stuff. They're kind of, but that one's kind of different. And for the Philiac crowd, we've got Caster Acquires Raptophilia, which means you are want to rape, or like rape, or something. Caster Acquires Sexual Sadism. Again, not a disadvantage in Fatal. Everybody has it anyway. Target Creature Acquires Voyeurism, Zoophilia, uh, or Caster and Target. Basically, this is repeated for everything. One is the caster and one's the target, so that's just that helps him uh, pad out the two thousand entries. Uh, then we go down here. Fairy creature is unable to urinate unless birds can be heard chirping. In a fantasy game, that's probably doable without a whole lot of trouble. Unable to breathe unless their thumb is plugging up their butt. That. That would be difficult. That would be a difficult character to justify continue playing. Caster is far beyond driven to steal undergarments and must do so once per day or lose one life point. How would you lose a life point? What from? Is it damage? Do you hurt yourself? If you can't steal panties or whatever? Caster gives a vulgar display of power with their mouth for war and by yelling, I'm fucking hostile! <laughs> kind of like Mel Gibson in Signs. I am angry with rage! Caster must end every sentence with the word fatal. Which I've been doing, so maybe I've had that happen to me. And last cat appears before the caster and they adore each other. The name of the cat, of the male cat is Hades. Why? Why is the name of the male cat Hades? Couldn't you leave that up to uh, them? Oh, actually here. Here's one I missed. Caster receives a permanent penalty of 1d100 with the urinating skill. Oh man, I hate that. I was. That's really what I'd been improving all my spending all my skill points and stuff to improve was the urinating skill because it's so vital. Now I get a penalty to it. That's just great. The main master hates me. The urinating skill gets a penalty. That, that's just, that's horrible. How will I live? And then there's phobias and again, it's just like fatal is, it has a ton of resources fear of spiders and flowers, and I'm sure he's got a ton of sexual stuff that most other books don't have. Uh, fear of food, cats, the travel, night, words, uh, fear of beautiful women, join the club, I guess. There's a ton of, ton of role-playing gamers and nerds. Uh, and here's ingredients. Uh, the ingredients... A sacrificial baby boy placed on a stone altar die upon casting a spell. These are pretty much like you would expect. Uh, gold, and uh, then they get worse. A fang of a serpent. Crushed spider. It's like, okay. Coin from a dragon's hoard. Yeah. And then you get this here. I'm not even going to, I really, I'm not even going to, going to verbalize these because 
do I really need to? I just would like to say that that there's how how would you even get these I mean I know there's no possible way he could have really intended these as as real ingredients for a spell or food or whatever these are ingredients for it says they're spell ingredients but who knows with fatal and again they use such alliteration uh, and the grimoire of a mage who has wrapped the filia, fecal remains of an ogre love child of a peasant aristocrat I just I, I don't know why just why now here's a few uh Caster must swallow the brain of a squirrel hole. Ugh. A smelly, dirty, nasty, and sticky booger from a horse. Booger. Not mucus. Not snot, even. But a sticky booger. It's like he was 12. A booger. Further down we find... A homemade poopal beater. What in the hell is a poopal beater? Does anyone know what a poopal beater is? Is that supposed to be a people beater? And if so, what's a people beater? What is a poopal beater? <laughs> these 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 make me laugh. Fastest tadpool and its family. What's a tadpool? He's obviously ref meaning a tadpole, but he's got it twice. He's got it the slowest tadpool. A uh, dried poop of a priest. Gonads of a goat. I see the alliteration G P. Beaver of a beaver. That was just too easy, I guess, uh, to expect him to uh, <laughs> rise above that sort of uh, obvious joke, and so he didn't. Um, now here we find uh, oil that has been splashed over the body of a virgin. Extra virgin oil, maybe? Byproduct of a bimbo and a boy. See the alliteration again. Byproduct of a bimbo and a boy. A, what boy and a, what boy and bimbo? What's a byproduct? Do they play Scrabble? Or is this sex? And what's the byproduct? Isn't that a baby? Or I don't know. Uh, pubic hair of a penis that has entertained at least 50 different females. Testicular hair of a male who has launched sperm over three feet horizontally today. You would think that would be difficult to obtain. But with races like the Anakim and stuff that are like basically giants, I suppose it's possible. Hair from a woman who has caused 20 males to smile widely in the last hour. So, like, a stand-up comedian? Think that's what he's referring to? Might not be. Hair from a woman whose crotch may be smelled five feet away. Someone that's got a plate of cookies sitting on her lap? Again, probably not what he means. But I can dream. Uh, defecation from a homosexual? Sure. Sometimes you need that for a spell. Urine from a creature who has smaller genitals than the spellcaster? Okay. 
urine from a mother who values the life of her child more than her own. Hopefully that would be most. Semen from a homosexual or bisexual. How would that matter to a spell? And that is, thank God, the end of the spell the ingredient list. And here's main master characters. And his uh, purpose is to supply characters for the main master, not the players. And here is the grand uh, lit grid here. For just for Anakim, he provides ten different characters. And here's their physiques and genders and all this stuff and spatial and math. And look at these stats. Look at these. Look at the stats in a fatal character. Start over here at gender, disposition, temperament. Look at all this. Weapons. This does not include the sexual optional characteristics. And there's dwarves and elves and half orcs and halflings and humans. And there's the index, thank God. And references. And he he actually doesn't have nearly as many as I would have expected for an eight hundred and thirty page book. And then we come to him, the evil one himself, Doctor Splitfoot. About fatal games. It's the founding company for Fatal, the role-playing game. Fatal Games seeks to distribute role-playing games that are detailed, realistic, and historically, mythically accurate. You failed. You failed badly. Uh, through scholarship, what does that mean? Fatal Games assures the public that information provided in its game seeks historical, mythical accuracy. You failed and will be continually updated in efforts to achieve that goal. You failed. If you have a suggestion and can support it with scholarly resources, you should die in a fire, and I will find some scholarly resources and will email you soon. Uh, Fatal Games will be happy to review and possibly include your suggestion. The current goal of Fatal Games is to prepare for the publishing of Fatal. Along these lines, good things happen almost weekly. But not here. Not from Fatal, and not from anybody associated with it, reading it, looking at it, playing it, remembering it. Not here. Uh, they At one time, they were reachable by sending um, an email to webmaster at fatalgames.com. Due to the volume of email, read absolutely offensive insults and complaints and uh, jokes at our expense and spam. Uh, we ask for your patience and will reply as soon as possible. To see the latest from Fatal Games, proceed to the following address on the internet. HTTP colon slash slash www.fatalgames.com slash and that actually says page not found now because there is a God. Fatal games where the dice never lie, except when they do. Byron Hall, the founder of Fatal Games and author of Fatal, now that's this guy here. This is this is who we have to blame. Uh, adore. I thought it said abhors, and I was thinking, yeah, that's about right. Adores gaming and writing. He's been a role-playing gamer since 1980. I'm not sure if I believe it or not. When not collecting degrees in addition to his Masters of the Arts, supposedly, he has so many abbreviations in this, I'm not sure if that's what that stands for. He enjoys dissonant shred guitar. Uh, ancient and medieval literature and history, philosophy, research and statistics you bastard this game is dedicated to Skorica well Skorica can have the damn thing Byron thanks family, friends, staff 
staff, you, really, you, you have staff, really, at any time you had staff, artists, contributors, supporters, and fans. Supporters and fans, hmm. Well, I guess it's, I guess you're never too old to have imaginary friends. To everyone, happy dicing and slicing. Oh, well, isn't that special? So, there you go. We have completed the journey uh, that is fatal. Fantasy Adventure to Adult Lechery. Thank you, Byron Hall, for this rare, but not rare enough, opportunity to look into the void and for it to look back into us. <laughs>